let's look at public key encryption in detail the the most common use is the encryption where uh, you have a key pair everybody makes a key pair and everybody publishes the public key and keeps a private key secret so if you want to send uh, something private to somebody what you do is you take his public key lock the data and mail it now the thing is that you may have everyone can see the public key but they, they cannot compute a private key because only one person has it and it's hidden and the guy who has a private key will be able to open the data unlock the data and, and read the, the thing so the data you sent him encrypted data so everybody else can just not decrypt the data but they can anyone can lock it but only receiver can read it that's encryption and the second use comes from it is that only the sender can lock it the digital signature part the, the sender has a, the key to lock it and then you publish it on the newspaper say or you put it on a bulletin board say it's a news report now anyone can lock it using your public key and if they can unlock it that means you have only you could have locked it nobody else could have locked it so they know you have uh, you have put it up and that means that you have that's the equivalent of your signature on the document so that's digital s signature uh, in this case everyone can unlock it using your public key but only you could have locked it so there's a second case of uh, public key cryptography and using these two pro uh, this these two and a lot of different uh, arrangements we can generate a lot of different uh, uses of public key cryptography and this is from Wikipedia the longer explanation for uh, public key cryptography and when you lock it it ensures confidentiality and when you have a signature it is called authenticity and with authenticity you don't have to actually sign the whole document you just have to sign the digest that means if you have a 500 page document you don't have to lock the whole message you can just take the hash of the message and sign the hash so people who receive the, the document they can read it and they want to check that okay uh, have you sent it or not what it is they take the hash hash of the of the message and then they use your public key and compare with what you have what key you have published so they know okay only you could have signed the document so that's the second purpose and what are the properties of encryption that you want to have a good algorithm so when you're sending the data there should be no, no leakage of information in transit that people shouldn't be able to figure out anything about the message by looking at the clock data and if you send it twice it should not look the same so once you say send hundred dollars to your bank and tomorrow if you send the same message twice send hundred dollars it should look completely different so they can't really guess okay otherwise what they do they rep replay your message to the bank and collect the money the second time and the size of the message does not indicate anything so say transfer hundred dollars or transfer thousand dollars there won't be any difference in the size or if there's a difference it won't be actually visible and there's no correlation between the size and the actual thing of the content of the message and what it, uh, typically people do is uh, avoid uh, replay of attack replay attack is by putting a timestamp every message has a timestamp and a number like TCP IP so serial number so then people see, okay somebody gets a message you, they, hope they, uh, they decrypt a message the thing is that you can collect all messages and then send it again without actually knowing what's in the packet so that's called replay and then but if there's a timestamp on it the person receiving it will say okay this looks like old message this can't be really a new message and the thing is a uh, brute force cannot be should not be able to crack the message so 64 bit can be cracked nowadays with supercomputers but 128 bit and above uh, like really out of reach of supercomputers even uh, we don't know about co quantum computers they don't exist in real life they only exist in theory and in hype so we'll assume that quantum computers don't really solve any problem right now so you're safe with like 128B, 28-bit or larger locks and then you can create uh, complex protocols using multiple locks so let's see what you can do with complex protocol what does that mean so there are two kinds of things you can do with locks in this picture we see a uh, OR lock they're like one lock uh, two lock out here if you have a key to the left lock or the right lock you can open the door so it opens with any one of the lock or this is in series the, the whole chain is in series this with this lock or this lock will open it so two people can have the key to it so anybody if you have this key you can open a door or the, another person has this key he can also open the door and this lock is really actually not connected 
and the, the, the second case is the AND locking. In this case, the door is locked with two, two locks and there are AND. And to open it, both the keys, you must have both the keys. Uh, suppose there are two people, they both must be present to open the lock. And using this, you can create any combination of locks like N out of M. That means five out of ten people must be present to uh, open the door. And the protocols you can create real big ones, but you can do it as exercise. So let's look at public key crypto. We already looked at it. This is the the public key. You encrypt it, and you the private key to decrypt it. The recipient's key. So if you want to go into the details of public cryptography.